Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, this week we're doing something completely different. Uh, what I've done this week is something completely different. It's a bit more of a walking trip rather than anything specifically planning based. But we're going to look at sort of planning along the route. So uh, the Usburn, um, this is the largest, longest tributary to the River Tyne and um, obviously comes out just outside of Newcastle City Centre and meets the River Tyne there. That part of the Usburn is really industrial, but this river, as, we, as with any river, has a real change from um, arable farmland near it at source um, through most of the residential areas and most of the areas of Newcastle actually has this river flow through it. Um, some exceptions in the sort of West End, but a lot of the West End's sort of um, expansions have the Usburn flowing around it. I also saw this really interesting um, documentary. I think it was made around the uh, 70s and 80s. I've put the date actually here, but it was um, someone did this exact same thing and sort of showed the Usburn throughout its sort of whole course. And I thought it was really interesting. I thought it'd be interesting to sort of see the comparison now of this sort of urban waterway and the changes that have gone on. So I only managed to complete uh, about a third of the route, um, so I'm gonna have to go back out at uh, another point and complete the second, well, the two other parts of it. Um, I'm planning something specifically on the sort of the lower Usburn Valley because there's a lot of regeneration going on around there and it's a real different place to the rest of the length of Usburn and I think it sort of warrants its own video. But the other two parts are going to be sort of me just wandering the length of the Usburn, sort of showing what's going on around it, showing the changes that are happening because. If you're not aware, some of the largest house developments in Newcastle are now being built just on the outskirts of the Usburn sort of watershed. So this is obviously going to affect the uh, river quality even more. It should be noted that um, the River Usburn, if you probably notice it in Jesmond Dean, there's often a smell, sort of an effluent smell to it. It's not the cleanest waterway, but because it's considered an urban waterway, I think it's considered acceptable. But I, I obviously it needs clearing up and they obviously they're putting more houses nearby, so don't think that's going to happen. But yeah, um, so I'm just going to go through some of the uh, major things you see along the route on the River Usburn. So the River Usburn actually starts at um, Carlton Pond. Um, I couldn't actually find exactly what was Carlton Pond. And if you type Carlton, Carlton Pond into Google, it doesn't actually come up as like a specific place. I found an old OS map of um, that sort of showed the tributary and I sort of worked it out to be not far from obviously Carlton Parkway Metro Station, hence the name Carlton Pond. Um, so that's obviously the starting point I was going for. If you look on Google Maps, the little, little stream running off the Usburn are also called the Usburn and it sort of splits off into three directions, but I think this is where it probably starts as like the overall river rather than the small streams. But bear in mind, it is still quite a small stream here. So I'm not sure. Um, you'll have to ask the Environment Agency and uh, not a planner on this one. Well, let's just start. To get there, obviously, the closest place you can get to is Carlton Parkway Metro if you're taking public transport or there's bus stops in Walsington or near the airport. Um, the walk into Carlton Pond from the metro station, it was about two hours round the actual way if you went the actual way round where you're meant to go. So didn't fancy that. Trying to get, obviously we're trying to get the whole route of the River Usburn in, in sort of a day. I thought if we're taking two hours to get from the metro station to Carlton Pond, we're, we're losing a lot of time and a lot of light, especially in the winter. So we tried to cut to get there and it was a not very nice route. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, but once you're at Carlton Pond, the footpath from there is a lot better. And I'd, if I was there, if I was to, if I was to do this again, I'd recommend starting there. Kelton Pond then leads on to a sort of a road that leads alongside the airport link road. So this is obviously a dual carriageway that was built as an airport relief road. So this road just literally goes to the airport and it's just to help traffic there. It connects on the A1 near Kingston Park. Um, so from the route from Kelton Pond, you sort of follow this nice footpath. Um, it's near the mo it's obviously near that dual carriageway, but it's quite nice to show from the trees. You don't notice that much but then you get to a footbridge over the motorway, which is quite nice and you sort of ramp up and go over the motorway, gives you a cool view from up above and sort of, 
you can see for miles here because the sort of um, Newcastle rise on a bit of a hill as you go into it from the uh, west so it was a really impressive view and you can sort of see Kingston Park in the distance and and this then takes you down for another bit of a trail and then you get into uh, you have to cross the metro tracks so again this is the airport metro tracks um, sort of skirt around the village of Walsington. Walsington doesn't actually have a stop on the metro which is um, quite strange I think it's probably due to the nature of Walsington as a village is quite small and the houses there are quite large. What quite is quite weird about this um, crossing is that it's literally just a gated crossing which um, is in common a lot of the other parts of the metro. And then once you're into now you're into the um, one side of Walsington. So Walsington as a village, um, I'll show you on Google Earth, but it's quite separated by the main road that links through it. This used to be the main road to uh, Pontyland, I believe, and the airport. But there's sort of two sides to Walsington. Um, there's one side which looks very 1940s, 1950s, and it's just sort of nice residential houses to sort of go back onto a bit of woodland in the metro tracks, um, sort of follow a nice sort of street pattern. Um, normally detached or semi-detached houses, uh, really quite pleasant. And there's um, a great garden centre here as well, Cowles. Um, so I think it's an independent garden centre, one of the largest. Um, I recommend going to visit that when it's um, when it's open. Uh, and the other side of Orsington is just um, big, big detached houses. They're sort of, I'd almost call them mansions, and these are just huge houses, all detached, um, set in a lot of spacious ground. And it's really interesting to sort of see the two sides of Orsington. Obviously, all they're all nice houses, but um, there is just a major difference. Um, there's Walsington Park South. So the area of Walsington used to be a historic park and gardens. Um, the house itself burnt down. Um, not much more to say about that, but the house itself burnt down. And sort of the, the I believe Walsington Park South is built in part of the gardens. Also as part of Walsington, you have the um, historic woodland. So as part of this, there's also historic woodland. Um, I'm sure from what I've heard, they were trying to build houses in the historic ancient woodland at one point, but I think that was luckily stopped. Walsington is all in the green belt, so any development that goes on here has to be in accordance with sort of green belt policy, so it's quite interesting. They won't allow any development to sort of large or that sort of thing. So then leaving Walsington, you, um, at the minute there's an open gap between Walsington and Bankfoot, which is the next metro station. Um, Bankfoot has just been part of a massive house building scheme, well it still is currently, there's a lot of houses being built here, um, just on the outskirts, it's all uh, Greenbelt releases, um, I think Taylor Wimpies are doing this, and they're just building a massive new house and estate here, um, and on the other side of the road as well, so you've got north and south of the road, they're building houses, quite a sustainable location considering it's got a metro stop, but I think they're quite uh, suburban homes, so I'll have to see how that turns out. Um, and then obviously in the distance as well you can see the Kingston Park Stadium, so this is obviously Newcastle Falcons home ground. This is also out uh, this end of the city. At the minute though, the River Ouseburn is flowing, you can't actually access it, it's flowing to the north um, of where you can walk. Um, and obviously the homes in Walsinger Park South are quite pleasant, they actually have the, um, the river flows through the gardens, I wish I could show you this but Basically, people have little streams like flowing through the garden, and other sorts of the river is burned, so it's, it's quite pleasant around there. And then, sort of, the, the river's skirting to the north here, the only footpaths you can really get to that obviously I know of, look, looking at from Google Maps, I could find was obviously following the main road into Kent and Bankfoot. Kent and Bankfoot, the route we took was turned to took a left uh, towards Falcon's Ground. Um, and sort of follow along here and what what you see here is Kingston Park um, I'd say it's the westernmost edge of Kingston Park so this was built around the 70s I believe it's a fairly nice housing estate area um, a lot of detached and semi-detached houses short few minutes drive away from the city so it's quite pleasant and uh, some of these houses obviously at the minute would look over just green land and um, you'd be able to see for miles but obviously this is changing now loads of new houses being built around here. 
Uh, our route then follows along and we take another left at the end of the road towards Great Park. Great Park itself, I want to make a video on it specifically because it is, it's a huge, huge house development. Um, it, I want to, I would even go to call it and it wanted to be like a new town, but it's not really a town in itself. It's thousands and thousands of new houses being built just off the A1. Um, again, Greenbelt site that has been dedicated to new house and developments. So this is a huge, huge scheme. So there's different cells. I, I would be able to, I can't even remember the name of the cells. I know it goes from A to about D. I couldn't tell you which is which anymore, but um, the River Roseburn sort of flows between these and sort of skirts its way around all these house developments as it makes its way into the city. So this is again where we pick up the river. We find it again. There's a nice few put, footpaths through Great Park. I don't know if they're uh, marked or they're, they're just dog walking paths or what they are, but there's quite a clear route sort of leading through. What happens next though, we've, we'll, we'll get into around two o'clock, we're starting to lose the light a little bit. Um, and we make the fatal mistake of forgetting this is a huge house and development. And um, there's recently been a dispute between two of the house builders. So there's Great Park Consortium and there's another house builder trying to build someone on a site nearby. And they sort of had a fallen out and basically they're putting in a new road because another house builder wouldn't let them have an exit onto a roundabout um, and then highway schemes. So it, I think it got quite complex there. I forgot what's taking place and we tried to skirt around this and sort of get around it. But what ended up happening was we mistakenly took a turn that wasn't gated off or anything. And it led us onto the, the link road, which we got stuck on for the next half an hour trying to get out of this construction site we mistakenly walked into because there's just sort of a gap in the fence. And we thought, oh, maybe this is a footpath through. Uh, obviously there's none of this is on Google Earth at the minute. So any looking at routes just shows you can cut through it and get in. So we get lost in um, Great Park and we're starting to lose the sunlight. So we made the decision, we'll stop get to Ford and Metro and we'll come back another day. So yeah, that's a quick little one of the walk we did so far. I plan to complete part two in the next few weeks. So just stand by for that. And then obviously part three of the Lower Oosburn Valley and sort of work on in a minute. Kind of do a bit more of a documentary style on this one rather than sort of telling you what's going on. I want to sort of get some of people's voices in on it. But yeah, thanks for watching this little video.